let's still talk at a high level. And as longtime real estate investors, we've often viewed real estate as a, a great hedge against inflation. And the reality is, is you know, inflation's moving higher. You get to benefit from that in terms of your rents. Certainly affects your, the cost side of your business as well, which we'll talk about. Um, and true to form, that's exactly been the case. We're seeing your releasing spreads. We're seeing your rent renewals at you know high single digit, low double digit, and, and industrial even more than that. Having said that, you know with higher inflation, higher rates, uh, we're seeing REIT prices really pull back this year. On average, REITs are down some 20%. Um, is it different this time, guys? Is, are, in fact, REIT investors going to be vindicated and see a recovery in REIT prices? So maybe let's start with why you think there's been a pullback in REITs this year, even though they're benefiting from you know, some of these higher inflation numbers and higher rent rolls. Kevin? Well, I'll, I'll start. I think that they will. I mean, I firmly believe that they will be vindicated. Um, I think there is a valid concern about the rise in the cost of borrowing. But if you look at REITs, we're not a highly levered buyer. You know, you look at a lot of the private equity firms that we're using typically 75% leverage. I think we finished the second quarter at 28% leverage. So I, I don't think that that's factored in enough to the story of REITs and the story of, of Granite. And then if I'm in a high sort of inflationary environment, I want to invest in businesses that I think have very solid fundamentals, that have a strong balance sheet, and can drive dividend growth and drive cash flow growth. And I, I look at a company like Granite, and I look at a company like CapRate, and I think we're very well positioned to capitalize on that. So I think that the there is a valid concern about where NAV is or where, you know, where, the, where the values are. Um, but certainly where the unit price is today has well surpassed um, what we've seen in the market in terms of, in terms of uh, the moves and values of assets. Mark, what are your thoughts on kind of REIT prices today and kind of why they are where they are? Well, in the, in the case of cap REIT, we look at, you know, it's a tale of, of two ownership groups. It's, it's the public market owners of real estate and it's the private uh, sector owners of real estate. And when you combine all apartment REITs together in Canada, you don't hit 5% of ownership. It's, we're a very small part of a much bigger community. That's not the case in our other uh, sector peers where they you know, kind of dominant position in, in a sector in the public markets. We're very much a private business that participates in the public markets. Mm -hmm. So when we look at um, valuation, Kevin said it, it's all about NAV. And for investors out there, I strongly, strongly recommend you really understand management's methodology for calculating NAV, because <laughs> we all do it differently. Right. And, that, and that is, to me, in a value environment, uh, something you have to really focus on when stock prices are disconnected completely from real valuation. So in our case, we started off as a business that we liked yield, but we also liked this 50% of re replacement cost equation. With inflation, we now see that pushing in the 35% a replacement expand cost. on that a little bit yeah. more so people understand what we're talking if about. If you build there. a new building for $100, the equivalent building at cap rate is cost you $35. And that's what you're, when you're buying cap rate stock uh, at, at a $60 NAV, that's the 35 bucks. So it's incredibly good protection for long-term inflation. Real estate always has been. I think what happens though, is when you look at our retail investors and you look at our institutions that are churning stock, what, what, what they're doing is they're looking at yield alternative. So it's really being valued as yield. And they say, well, you know, I like CapRate, it's a great company, but you know, I can get a bond over here and I'll feel a little more safe and I'll sell it down to that number. So as bond yields go up, CapRate is a bond comparison, as I'm sure Granite is, is also. And so we're in that uh, yield competitive space without looking at the underlying value. Bonds don't have underlying value other than surety of, of payment. They don't have inflation value protection. So what I always say to, to our investors is please, please pay attention to NAV mm -hmm. and please don't underestimate our small percentage of replacement cost and our development opportunity, okay? We're buying and the portfolio, we're going through a renewal process right now of dispositions, but the average age of the port, uh, buildings of the portfolio is plus 40 years. That means these were fantastic uh, residential locations 40 years ago. <laughs> In major centers, that makes them spectacular locations today. So I think all I could highlight and get into it uh, later if you want or now, but it's all about, it's always been about uh, yield growth. It's always been about earnings per share growth. It'll always be that story. 
But I think in times like this, you have to pay attention to value. And in our case, in the apartment market, there's ample trades to show that values are absolutely holding up. So